Hey everyone, my name is Andrew and I am the owner of Holy Ground Sneaker Shop. Uh, I've owned the business for a year and a half and there's a few things I've learned down the road. Just a quick disclaimer, uh, we are a buy sell trade sneaker shop so it's not one in the shopping malls or something that we're gonna overprice some stuff at so we go based off of market. There's some things that you might still find helpful if you wanna own a different kind of shop. No hate, it's just whatever it is, I'm just giving you my perspective. So with that, let's go ahead and jump into this top 10. All right, so these are in no particular order, but starting off at number one, if you're just starting off opening up a store, don't get so caught up in buying all of the hype grail stuff items. Like it's super cool to have. It's probably something that you're thinking about. Oh, I need it in the shop. But just know my advice to you is if you are gonna buy something that is heater, maybe go more on the lower end of stuff and also something that you know is gonna be really popular. Right now for us, these are selling like crazy. The Jordan 1 Reverse Mochas, they just came out. They are more expensive. Obviously, if you're talking about Grail shoes, they're around $1,000, maybe around $1,500 for certain sizes, but it's nothing that's gonna go too, too crazy and it's something really affordable versus having something like this. The Nike SB Low Tiffany, grail shoe for some people especially in super clean condition but you know it's like uh, depending on condition it could be anywhere from a thousand to like three four five thousand dollars shoe depending if it's you know there's a lot of things that can happen with it but it's a cool shoe to have but it's going to take a very unique buyer to have it super cool to have in the shop but it'll probably sit for a while instead of fifteen hundred dollars tied up in one shoe you could buy like I don't know, I hate to say it, but like five or six Panda Dunks, you know, and maybe seven or eight Panda Dunks. And those are probably gonna sell a lot faster. You're gonna make a lot more money um, and a quicker return without having just one shoe sitting here. So you can make a lot more profit off of smaller priced items. Don't always go for the hype stuff. But if you do have to, just make sure you grab stuff that you know is gonna move fast for you guys. So that's my tip for number one. All right guys, for number two, I'm gonna go ahead and say content creation is gonna be your best friend. So I know that you guys may not feel like you might be the best person on camera. You might not wanna start a YouTube channel. It is so much work, but I know that I wouldn't be where I'm at without content creation. So even right now, I'm heavily going into, I'm sounding like Gary Vee, but it really does pay off. Ask your customers, hey, how'd you find out about me? If they're new, see if what's working for you. Google, is it Yelp? All of that kind of plays into a role. Some people find out about us through YouTube, which is what you guys are watching. Some people find us through TikTok, through Instagram. We post daily on all of those platforms or at least try our best to because we understand that that growth really helps us get new customers in our doors or checking out our website. So just have fun with it. Don't take yourself too seriously. You don't have to be in it. If you wanna be in it, you know, that's even better. People love making that personal connection. People like to come into our shop, see the people that they see on YouTube. It's a connection and that's what's important to me. Make some content that you think is important to you and relatable and just share it. Who cares if you get five views and maybe one of those things is gonna hit a million views. You never know. And that's the beauty of content creation. All right guys, so for point number three, we're gonna go ahead and dig a little bit back into point number two. But as you guys see, this is our Instagrammable wall. Another way that you could use content creation is posting things on your story so other people can talk about it, share it with their friends. So this spot was really cool. It's based off of The Simpsons and we added some cool little hype pieces to it. Take pictures of your customers, post them on Instagram, make it easy for them to reshare you so that way your platform grows and. Uh, people are gonna be like, oh, hey, I found out about you because my friend posted you on their story. Um, the other side of that, like I touched on in point number two, was also Yelp and Google. Don't forget to do that. A lot of sneaker businesses don't put themselves on Google or on Yelp, and if they do, they also get really bad reviews. So make sure that your customer service is on point. Make sure everything's good. Everything you need to do is just to make it as easy as it is for your consumers to come and find you. Meaning, have your website up on Google and Yelp, have your address, have your store hours. If you have a phone and you want people to call you, put your phone number, just do that stuff and it'll help you because it's crazy how many people find out about us just through searching Google and Yelp. So point number three is Google Yelp and kind of also making sure that you have something to really bring more people in other than just your normal products. So for point number four, 
it's gonna be have store rules. So something that I had to learn on the way was, you know, have rules in place and know how you wanna run your business. Meaning we get so many different customers in here that um, you need to learn how to stand your ground. One, don't be a jerk because obviously people are gonna see that and they're not gonna like you as an owner and they're not gonna wanna shop with you. You know, um, I think kindness goes a long ways. But it's also talking about having store rules in the sense of like when people ask you, oh, can you do a discount or do you guys, are you guys firm on prices? If you guys wanna be firm on prices, that's your call. But just know that when customers ask you those questions, especially when you're a new store, they, and you give them that discount, they're gonna come back and ask for that discount over and over and over again. So the best way to kind of, if you don't always wanna give discounts and get taken advantage of, you have to have those rules in place. So we have all sales final, no returns or exchanges because they are expensive shoes. Who knows what happens after they leave the door? Um, it's just something that we do to protect ourselves. Now we could fold and be like, okay, I'll take this return for you or I'll do this exchange. But every time that customer is gonna come back thinking, well, you helped me out last time or hey, you gave me a discount last time. Oh, hey, you waived sales tax last time. And so every time you do that, it's gonna be harder and harder because one day you're gonna have that conversation. Hey man, sorry, I can't do that anymore. And they're gonna be like, bro, I thought I was your loyal customer. Happens all the time, I'm not joking people getting upset, writing you bad Yelp reviews after you've hooked them up for so long and all of a sudden the one time you don't, they blow up, get upset. So sometimes it's better just to cut that in the bud. But like I said, if you wanna be a shop that also always offers discounts and you wanna be workable, we know some places like that and they love working that way, that's your call. But just know that you should have your own rules set in place for stuff like that. All right, so point number five, we're gonna talk about location. Now, obviously, if this is your first time opening up a sneaker store, if you guys are blessed and have a lot of money, then, you know, choice is yours. And, but for me, I started very small. I only had so much money. So I landed in a nice, quiet little plaza. And location just has so many different meanings, but also like so much value. So for us, well, we're on a busy street, but we're in a kind of random plaza that doesn't really bring in a lot of foot traffic. So for us, like I previously said, you know, content creation helps us bring people in, but location also depend or defines your customer base. So for us, we're not in a shopping mall. We're not in a super crowded plaza where everyone's walking by. So certain shoes don't sell for us that like maybe stores in a shopping mall might. People have to find us by searching us up and people who search us up are usually gonna be like real sneaker heads or people who are more interested in actually searching out a sneaker shop rather than someone who just stumbled upon a random one at a shopping mall. So for us, we sell uh, a lot of retros, um, maybe not like higher number ret numbered retros. We do get some OG customers in here, but we also do sell, you know, a lot of classic shoes, Jordan 3 Black Cements, Jordan 4 Breads, Jordan 11 Breads, Concord Space Jams, all of those kind of good classic OG retro shoes. Now we do obviously still sell some more popular shoes like Dunks, SBs, um, you know, stuff like that, but shopping malls might sell better at Jordan 1 Lows, Jordan 1 Mids, even Jordan 1 Highs at this point. Um, you know, they sell probably a lot more of those, maybe a lot more Yeezys than we do, and that's just based off of location. So just know your location kind of defines a little bit more of what you need for inventory, also what you might need to do for um, marketing. It defines your overhead cost, you know? So there's a lot that, for us, we're in a smaller random plaza in a smaller building, we're in 800 square foot. So our rent is um, 1550, which is really cheap for us being in California versus, you know, I'm opening up a new store and I'm paying way over that. So, um, but that spot has its own benefits and its own customer base. And, you know, because we built this, we're able to afford something like that. So just know that don't go and making bad, rough financial decisions because you do have to sign a certain amount of time as a lease. But if you're, if it's your first shop, it's okay to start small. It's okay to build up your brand. Um, but just know that you're gonna have to work harder in your content creation and you're gonna have to really curate your selection um, based upon your customers. So point five is location has a big influence on your shop. All right, so for point number six, we're gonna go ahead and talk about when you first start off, you're gonna be grinding like no one's business. You know, I, I was putting in uh, close to 80 hours a week just trying to survive 
something that I didn't know as I kind of move more into this other space of yes, the business is becoming successful. I'm very blessed with that. Obviously making money is good, but it's not just about the money. Um, I love sneakers, I love everything about it, and that's why I am doing something I'm passionate about. So for point number six, I would say the more that you're in it, um, and the more successful that your business grows, the more that you're going to uh, honestly like be less and less involved in sneakers because you start to have to facilitate a lot of different things as a boss, and handling employment, handling any HR type of stuff, handling, you know, just really anything else that happens to the building, things that you need to get fixed, people that you need to meet, just, just know that the more you kind of get into and growing your business, the more and more you're gonna get taken away from like the average day-to-day -day customer service, just because you're gonna to start to handle bigger and better things. So it's not necessarily a bad thing that you're not getting more involved with sneakers. Obviously my life is still so consumed with it, but I'm also having a lot more meetings with my staff members. I'm, you know, having a lot more meetings with different people who wanna collaborate and do brands and just a lot of different stuff that you probably didn't think about. Sneakers is always gonna be there. It's always gonna be the thing that you circle around, but you might see yourself starting to slowly fade away from the day-to-day -day interactions with all your customers, which I love our customers. It's something that I'm very proud of and I'm very thankful for, um, but now sometimes I have to be in the back a little bit more working on some different stuff to make the shop still function while I have someone else who can handle customer service being out there in the front. Point number seven, kind of digging a little bit back into point number six, your overhead gets a little bit more expensive the more that you grow. So just keep in mind that, you know, maybe when you first start off, you're the first and only employee here. Um, you know, technically you don't really have to pay yourself. You're really just trying to make the business grow. But say you start needing help, you start getting busy. Now you got to start hiring employees. So now you have to pay payroll, which one, I didn't know that you pay, if I pay you say $15 an hour, um, then I'm really paying more than $15 an hour because I have to pay your payroll taxes on top of that. So I pay you more than $15 an hour. Plus also I have to have workers comp, which is extra cost that goes into things. And there's just so much more that kind of keeps building up, whether if it's um, maybe more inventory, maybe start going out of space just to say, but even when you guys sign up for your internet, you get the first one year for like a really good deal. And then after that, they're going to start charging you. Like you went from like seven, $70 to like $150 a second year and you're trying to you know call and be like you know I need my price lowered but like everything just jumps because everyone wants to give you a good deal in the first kind of couple years um, there's even some leases that you know they kind of increase over a period of time so instead of having a flat rate like it kind of increases every single year so there's a lot of different ways that your overhead costs can increase obviously the more busier you get the more employees you're going to want to have maybe you want to have a content creator maybe you want to have someone to you know start editing your youtube videos because now you're too busy to do stuff like that so i mean shout out to matt our camera guy uh, for doing that shout out to benji for killing our tiktok right now so um but you know those are things i still pay for for because I think it's benefiting the shop, but obviously my overhead cost is no longer just a, like, I think when I first started my overhead cost was like maybe like 2,200, 2,500, something like that, which is very cheap uh, considering having your own brick and mortar store. But, you know, now we have a full staff, we have, you know, a set second location, we have all this different stuff going and my overhead cost is super expensive, but it's still worth it because everything that I do brings value. So making sure that all of your overhead costs aren't on dumb things like a like a Netflix subs subscription because you're just chilling back here watching Netflix one like that. Hopefully that should never be a position that you're in, but you want to make sure that everything that you're paying for your overhead is going to bring value to you because that's money you're pouring out. Sit down, have a good measure of what you're spending, what you're bringing in, your cost for all this other stuff, maybe even getting a separate account where you can put Put your sales tax because you're gonna to have to start paying your sales tax that's something that hit me really big your end of your taxes is you know gonna be a lot make sure you get a good CPA um, and secondly also like your sales tax that you collect every single month it's really hard because sometimes you're gonna think wow like I sold this shoe for you know $400 say sales tax is 10% 
$40 that the customer paid, I'm getting $440 into my bank account, but $40 does not belong to me. $40 I have to pay the government. So sometimes your bank account might be like, dude, I'm making a lot of money. And all of a sudden you're like, yo, I owe $15,000 to the government and I only have 20K in my bank account now. Now I have to pay that because I don't wanna pay a penalty. And now I only have 5,000 when I thought I had 20,000. So it, just make sure you really keep that in mind because sales tax sucks. I, it's part of it, but it's just part of owning a business. It sucks, but making sure you separate knowing what money is yours and what money is not yours because it's going to suck when you have that payday come and you owe all these bills and you're like, dang, I thought I had a lot more money than I didn't. So just making sure you keep track of your overhead, be a good financial planner and budget and just if you do those right off the bat, you'll be set. All right guys, so point number eight is it's okay to take a loss sometimes. So um, that's just a hard lesson because I think it's hard to take a loss. It just, it sucks. Like uh, for example, this is the Syracuse Dunk. This is the new one from 2022. Um, before this, prices were going for around $700. We had a pre-owned pair, super clean, worn ones for 500 um, because that was just kind of the market at the time and it just never sold for us which sucks but it happens and then this pair comes out and now brand new pairs are hitting like 220 240 so my pair is no longer worth 500 and we ended up taking a loss on it just because i'm not going to sit around and have that shoe just be priced at 500 no one's going to buy it and people are going to look at it and be like bro you're taxing like it just it is what it is and so we ended up selling it for i think like 180 or 200 or something like that you know they sold but we probably took a loss of like 150 dollars so it just it is what it is you can't control the market you can't control what happens but the thing that sucks is when you're stuck with old inventory that's just been sitting there and no one's going to buy it because your reach is only so far as as you grow obviously it gets bigger but um, don't sit around just because you're scared to take a loss because it sucks the money that you get back that 180 that we get back from that shoe that was sold we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna reinvest it, buy some other shoes, and those are gonna sell and flip and sell and flip. So you kind of make your money back. It's just part of the game. It's you win some, you lose some, nothing's gonna be perfect. Um, but just as long as you're winning more than you're losing, that's always important too. But obviously not too much crazy stuff happens, but when it does, just being okay, saying like, hey, it's just part of the market, it's part of the game. Um, don't hold on to things because that's going to be, it's more of your ego that you're holding on to, to tell you the truth, that you don't want to take a loss, that you made a bad call, you made a bad decision. You know, let go of your ego for the sake of your business so that way you can, one, learn from the mistakes. Obviously, something like this, maybe I should have bought it cheaper so that way we could have priced it at maybe 450 or 420 and maybe that it would have sold before all of this restock stuff might have happened. So just don't feel like you made it because once you feel like you've reached the peak of like, wow, I'm such a great person or wow, I'm such a great business person, that's when you hit your ceiling and your business will probably stop to grow or it'll grow past you. You're gonna be stuck and you're gonna be holding your business back, which also sucks. So kind of a weird point to make, but there you go. So point number nine, I would say is have a vision. Every good leader has a vision. Um, what usually ends up happening is say you have employees and you share your vision with them. They get it, they understand it, but slowly over time, people start to forget what their vision was and starts to chase you know, different goals and different things that happen. What a true leader does is they end up leading everyone back to that vision and always keeping after that vision. So have a vision for your store. For me uh, and for us, the reason it's called Holy Ground is because one, um, yes, I'm a Christian um, and that is kind of my heart behind it is, you know, in the sneaker world, it was always seen as like, it kind of had a weird look, at least with like the Christian world, like, oh, why are you buying my nice shoes, expensive stuff? Like, I'm sure you guys saw preachers and sneakers and all that stuff. But we wanted to kind of flip the script, especially for people who go to church being like, hey, no, shoes and clothing, it's okay to like stuff. Um, you know, it's not a sin to like stuff. Pretty much our goal was holy ground comes from Exodus 3 and the ground was holy because of God's presence. And for us, our vision is to create a community here where we can buy, sell, trade sneakers, have fun, do cool stuff. But at the end of it, it's all about creating a community where everyone 
feels loved and um, you know the presence of God is in each and every conversation every time someone comes into um, the shop that they're entering holy ground because of God's presence just always being there. That's our goal. Um, obviously, there's business aspects to that, but that's why I stress so much with customer service with our employees. I am always telling them it's number one for us because we know that there's so many other shops that you know, look at their reviews. It's always bad customer service. Like it's always, oh, they lowball. They like we're trying to be as fair as possible, and that's my goal in this sneaker space is to not take advantage of people and just to create a good environment for people. And um, at the end of the day, we do want to share, you know, our love for God and love people. Um, and so that's our vision. But what's your vision? What's you? What are you passionate about? That's going to be important for you to follow over and over. So when you grow and have employees, you can always try and break that down and always lead them back to that vision because you know it's your store it's your brand and you don't want your employees to kind of ruin that for you and just because you got too busy and too caught up in who you are what you're trying to do and grow and so just don't lose your roots is all I'm trying to say and just continue to grow on that so feel like a tree All right guys, so like I said, there's no particular order. So at hitting at point number 10 is inventory. So making sure your inventory is always up to date. It's super important. My suggestion that I found is I don't use Shopify. This is not a paid advertisement. I wish it was. I'd love to make a couple bucks here and there, but um, you know, we use Lightspeed. So if you guys are interested in a sneaker store, uh, software program that does e-commerce, that does great inventory management, we use Lightspeed. They're very good. They do card processing payments and all that stuff. And it's really made our lives easier. Um, saved me from doing twice the amount of work I used to do. So inventory management one is important. I used to use an Excel sheet and it was very tedious. It was a lot of work having a separate website, including that like Lightspeed takes care of all of that. It tells you, you could run reports about how much profit you've made, how much loss, what sales you made that day. Like it has a lot of functions. So just check them out. Their prices are pretty good too. So. That's pretty much it. Uh, hopefully you guys have enjoyed the top 10 things that I've learned so far. If you guys have any questions, leave those comments down below. If you guys want to see our day-to-day -day shop, that's what's mostly on our YouTube channel, but we're going to try and add these kind of new educational reseller business type of things, maybe every other week or so. So make sure to subscribe down below, uh, check out our Instagrams, our socials, all that stuff. The links are going to be down below as well. And with all that being said, stay holy and we'll see you guys on the next one.